So now we have a pretty good understanding of what these things are, um, to a degree, I guess. Uh, so the main difference between this and public schools is, what would you say? What do you think the main difference would be between this and a uh, public school? Yeah. Standards. Standards, that's a good one. What else? Do you think the big answer to? Mm -hmm. yeah. What's the last one? The big one. Independence in what in particular? Um, oversight. Oversight. Where how they get their money? Um, and the government, right? The government and don't they get them from their communities? That's right. Yes, a lot of donations. Donations are huge, millions, millions and millions of donations. So uh, <coughs> I did. Uh, I, I took a look at the Perez article, which was about um, Latino mothers. They they, they did a lot of. Uh, interviews with them, finding out what's important to people who don't speak English and can't navigate these systems so well. So uh, what I actually, I kind of went off the track there a little bit, but I wanted to t talk more about um, how these people are marketing these schools and what they're saying that's letting them get away with all this kind of thing. Um, that'll also kind of tie into what's important for these people who don't speak English as well to know. Uh, so you can see here these little cartoons. I have a bunch of little videos, um, very, very short, Maybe we can kind of pick some that we'd like to take a look at here. Uh, all right. So goals for today. Uh, it seems like a lot, but I think you guys will be able to handle this. Uh, we're going to be demonstrating knowledge by analyzing the events in real time. That's where the event, the, uh, the little clips come in. Very, very short, a minute, maybe like four or five is the longest one. Um, and I want you guys to be telling me what's going on, what they're saying, and, uh, and how that relates to our practices as teachers. We're going to be uh, relating to these by, by understanding their languages and what kind of characteristics are, are driving them to these profits, why they're so focused on the business rather than the kids. Um, we're going to be talking about their, their rhetoric versus their policy, how what they're saying doesn't really match up with what they're doing. Uh, whether what they're doing is implemented in the public schools, because we were talking about how some of these charter schools do very, very well, some of them don't do so well. Are we doing the same kinds of techniques in the public schools as well? We're gonna to try to, at the end, we're gonna do the discussion. We're also gonna to try to uh, do a little activity based on Perez to um, address the community's needs. And then we're going to be talking a lot about uh, recognizing and, uh, and combating the uh, educational propaganda that's out there. So I have a short video on propaganda. Uh, based on, this is based on the media's perspective, but I think if you guys substitute media and journalists and things like that for teacher and educate and school, I think it really applies to what we're gonna be talking about. So. So what, the last one was the, the boogeyman, the, the, the one, uh, something that everybody needs to be afraid of. What do you think that is for these, uh, for these advertisers right now? What are they combating in our uh, society right now? Why do we need the charter schools? Why do they feel so important? What is failing that they're replacing? The public, the public school system, right? So they're using all of these techniques to kind of manipulate people into thinking that these, tech, these ways of doing things are the best way regardless of what that means to <coughs> legality and all these other things. So I want you guys to keep that in mind because we're gonna be talking a lot about um, how they advertise and the things that they say uh, to allow them to get away with these things. So uh, I wanna talk a little bit more about what a charter school is. We, we did um, go over this a little bit, but uh, the protections are basically about uh, civil rights versus consumer choice. So the, the businesses are arguing that these private entities are free to do whatever they want because that's the law. Um, in education, they're talking uh, public good versus a market a co a commodity. Again, that draws back to the advertising that we just talked to talked about. Um, in issues, the solutions to these issues they find are venture ph philanthropy. Does anybody know what that term means by chance off the top of your head? Was it like venture capitalism, but instead for philanthropy? Yes, exactly. So uh, finding ways to market uh, philanthropic uh, efforts. So fixing kids through selling them things, basically. Um, and that's, that's opposed to socializing or just you know depositing all this money into the public school system. Um, if we look at funding uh, and the administration, we were talking earlier about how they're partly pub pro uh, publicly funded, but they're also heavily influenced by these donations that come in from their private interests. Um, so I wanna talk a little bit about the characteristics. Again, I have a couple very, very, very short videos. This one is about um, Dick DeVos, who is Betsy DeVos's husband. They uh, opened up a charter school in Michigan and we'll, we'll take a look at that one as well. But this is what he thinks um, are the important things for charter schools and why they're uh, available to everybody out, out right now. You can uh, make the decision yourself. Hundred schools were closed in the last 20 years. That's not winning. Children are getting a better education as a consequence of new options and new choices and new possibilities. That is winning. 
maybe a bias, but doesn't he kind of remind you of like a comic book villain or something like that? He's just like, I don't know, something slimy about him. But um, okay, so now we're gonna look at what's what's attracting these these people besides that you know mushy language and all this you know stuff that he's talking about. What what is attracting them? So these, this is gonna take a look at, a, at a, one of the charter schools uh, by Stephen Hawking, who's a big proponent of those. Every once in a while, you experience something that changes your life. And with all my years in education as a student, a teacher, I honestly can't name a school that has captured my imagination more than Stephen Hawking's charter school. Hmm. Okay, I don't know what's going on here. Is this like a mono output or something? I think this one actually is stereo, so. Okay, I guess I'll have to describe this one. Um, they're basically just talking about the school. I'll show you a couple little photos here. They have a lot of resources going on. You can see how they present themselves in this, even in the background for the interviews. These are just normal people, you know, the way that they talk, very, very normal. When they, can, when they talk to the kids, um, a lot of what I noticed, and I, I think you would notice too if we could actually watch it. Oh, you can hear it. Science, technology, engineering, arts, and math, and all the subjects. Since we do science every day, it Watch fills my passion that makes me want to do um, dolphin training, which is marine biologist. I walk into a first grade class, and there's this little girl next to this giant blue well, and she just looks at me and she goes, Would you like to learn about blue wells? And I said, Of course, you're at Hawking. I'm able to achieve my dreams. <laughs> right? It seems very rehearsed. You know, notice who they chose to show as the kids, what they chose to show. Have you guys seen any uh, setups like that big blue whale thing at a public school before? I have. Maybe in an art room or something. Something like that, right? I mean, so, I mean, this isn't that different. I think it's mostly the way that they're marketing to the parents. Uh, so let's take a look at one other one here. So this one is uh, something that would repel people like us. I I'm assuming most of you guys are, are against these. But um, this, this is the kind of thing that repels them, and this is actually from a charter school organization or a, a donor to charter school organizations. Uh, so this is the ending of their but little But as charter schools have become more about how positive it opposition is. has grown, teachers, unions, and other public school activists argue that charter schools take money away from traditional public schools. Every other sector of the American economy has benefited from the ability to compete and improve. Why not education? To learn more about education reform, visit informationstation.org. So what was, uh, did, did any of you guys happen to find that repelling at all, or anything like that? Did anything that they say kind of rub you the wrong way at all? It did for me, towards the end, uh, talking about marketing education. I thought that was a real cringeworthy little, why would you throw that in there? You know, I guess they kind of have to. Yeah. But, uh, okay, I so think of education as a business. Right, right. yeah, yeah I have education. I'm like, we mm -hmm. have a lot of for-profit business. Yeah, and they clearly do and are. And yeah. This is how they kind of get away with it. They, they slip these little uh, secrets about what they're actually up to in there. Um, so there are a bunch of case studies. This has been going on for a long time. We're not gonna watch all of these. Um, I did put up one on Baltimore, which is pretty recent. That's It's pretty uh, comprehensive. If you guys are interested in that, it's online. Uh, but if anybody would like to, to see any of these, I figured maybe we could watch three, maybe four, if you guys are really feeling them. Uh, does anybody have a preference, or I'll just start picking them? Some place you're from, some place you're curious about, or anything like that. They're very, very short. I'm intrigued by Baltimore. Baltimore? Oh, uh, that's the one that's online. Sorry, that's the longer one. New York. New York? Okay. It's clear. Go to calm down, Jeremy. Sit. Chief Angler, here come a first grade student's words. There's nothing that infuriates me more than when you don't do what's on your paper. The school's Kevin Amon is the highest performing on state tests in New York seven years in a row. I think this video. Send her to a training and she's back in the classroom. Right? How many of you guys have uh, ever used rip and redo in your classroom? Never heard of that. Never heard of that, That's right? That's crazy. I was surprised when the lady did it, when uh, the teacher did it, and then when the other woman brought it up. And it's yeah, like, that's a strategy. Yeah, right? right? This is a normal thing? <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe so that's... make them feel embarrassed, and that's yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's 
that's why we do it. School's all about embarrassment. Yeah, you guys got it right. That's what it was for. Right. Make it fair. All right, any other requests? Or that's one down. The 2018 Michigan one. <coughs> okay. Where's the name AFT is a great organization. That was Randy. Um, really does good work on this. Uh, so you notice the way that Betsy DeVos kind of tries to weasel her way out of those questions. What, what, you know, just, just take, start taking note of the kinds of things that she starts to say. Individual, all schools. Yeah. Right. That's, that's what but she's doing. Really her job. Yeah. So you know, push no, the blame away. Any other it. requests? Maybe one or two more. New Orleans. New Orleans. On the no, uh, yeah, she'll, she, she'll just reiterate that. But um, so he, he mentioned why they were going out of business. What did he say was the reason that they're going out of business? Very expensive special needs kids. The, the special needs kids, right? And also because they weren't following their charters, which is pretty much all that they need to worry about is following their charter in order to stay in business and keep getting their what? Funding. Funding from the community. The private donations, exactly. Yes. Okay, uh, I'll take the last one here. There's one more. This, this Ohio one is really good. This one's more about fraud. Coming back to the big picture. Arnie Duncan announced early this month that he's a little older from the Obama administration. In December, just days before his surprise announcement that he'd stepped down. So, what are some continuing trends that we're noticing here? I think a couple things that are pretty common. Lack of accountability. Lack of accountability. That's a big one. What else? How do they uh, try to solve the problems that they run into? How do they try to solve public education problems? Like shoveling money into yep, it. Yep, exactly. It's shoveling money into it, right? How do they solve the problems with uh, uh, any kind of issues that people have with the Trevor Brook School System? We haven't really talked so much about this, but maybe you guys read a little bit about this in your, in your papers. Okay, we'll keep that in mind. So just a little uh, little review here of the Obama administration. They um, they pretty much started this whole neoliberal corporate agenda to open up the door for charter schools. Their uh, key legislation that did this was raised to the top, and it basically uh, deregulated a bunch of things. Uh, pretty much took away Dodd Frank as well, uh, which is consumer protections. Um, so the neo neoliberal philosophies that we see that are transferring over into Betsy DeVos, who we're going to see uh, in just a minute here. Um, their philosophies are citizens are consumers to them, more or less. They're not so concerned with helping the students as they are as filling schools, building new things, uh, anything that generates revenue. Uh, their solution is governance over government. This is, uh, I believe it was Eastman that talked about this. I can't remember. Um, but more about rhetoric, again, than policy, which is what we're, we're going to be uh, really looking into here in just a second. Their justification is that uh, school choice plus personal motivation is a social justice solution to these people. They think that all the problems are going away because kids have the choice to go to the schools that they feel are, or their parents feel are the most uh, beneficial to them, and we're building motivation through their policies, quote unquote, of flexibility and innovation, which pretty much gives these schools legal immunity because they don't have to answer to the federal government. They um, often, decisions are left at states, which is much more lenient. So I want you guys to keep these things in mind, and um, we're going to be doing a, a little activity later on how to kind of pierce through these things. Uh, I want you to notice while we watch these, maybe jot down some notes or look through your articles or any, anything, look things up, whatever, whatever you have to do. But um, I want you to notice why and when they're using certain linguistical trends that they do, these little legalese things, uh, the, the topics that they actively support, and the ones that they try to distort so that their image is kept but they're not necessarily incriminating themselves. And then uh, we're gonna look at an angle that uh, seems seem to disarm uh, the legalese that especially Betsy DeVos puts forward here. Ooh, uh oh, where's my other one? There, there it is, okay. Uh, so this is Betsy DeVos talking uh, in her own words to young constituents at the conservative uh, political conference of some, I can't remember what the middle word is, CBAC. CBAC. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, so just notice, notice the kinds of things that she says to the young kids, the things that young people are, are um, interested in, and compare that to what we've been learning about. Today we know the system so is far. failing too many kids. The next generation deserves no less. Thank you, and I look forward to fighting alongside So how, uh, how does that match up with the things that we've been learning about and what her agenda has been? Is it 
similar to what she's actually been doing? Is she pushing for the rights of all those things? Which rights is she actually pushing for out of the things that she talked about? Private, private interests. Private interests, right? What else? It just sounds like a business yeah, choice. It sounds like a business. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Freedom of speech. State, yeah. state rights. State rights, exactly. So freedom of businesses. And creating an enemy of the current organization. <laughs> exactly. It's like if she wants teachers to be paid more, but she wants to direct funds out. I don't know. It just is, it's interesting. Well, and have great teachers are what right. drives it, but then you are going to employ people that aren't even accredited, like aren't right. licensed to teach. Yep. None of that is brought up, of course. Right? Yeah, you know, exactly. That's not the important thing right now. We're talking to a giant audience of you young people yeah. who are about to have kids. You know what I mean? So. Those are the important issues for parents, which we've seen in the other videos of, oh, my kids love it there, and oh, it's so beautiful, and blah, 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 yeah. I think it's interesting that she made such a point of making it so thoroughly political, like them against us mentality, yeah. when, I mean, if you are trying to withhold within the First Amendment, you should be able to have students and families and faculty of kind of all perspectives Generally, I feel like you know, with schools, you attract kind of whatever you know. I guess I guess the word to use right now is you like the vibe you're setting out politically too, and I can see how you would attract teachers and faculty that kind of agree with you. But she's making it very, very them versus us. Like if they're saying this, we need to do this. Why do you think she might be doing that? Why wouldn't she want liberals, you know, to be on? creates like a fear that you know things could be toppled or people are gonna say other things and not what he wants them. So we kind of have two boogeyman's going on, right? We have the, the public education system and then poor people basically that can't get their kids to learn is basically I think the overall gist of, of what, what they think. Um, so okay. So, um, now th this these are the parts that I really want to pay attention to. Uh, it's a lot of jargon I know but I think this is the important stuff that we need to kind of be deciphering. So uh, I want you guys to pay attention to, again, the way that she's using these linguistic patterns to deflect all of these important questions that, that came up in her Senate confirmation hearing. I, I will refer back to uh, Senator Enzi and the school that he was talking about in Wapiti, Wyoming. I think probably there, I would imagine that there's probably a gun in the school to protect from potential grizzlies. It is so what was the defense there? There might be bears. There might be bears. <laughs> like, like That's in right. Wyoming, there are bears. So like, there are bears? Wyoming's a different world. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. In a lot of ways. What kind of gun would you have if you if there was a busy grizzly bear around school? I don't know. You want like a bigger gun. You don't want a handgun. Would you bring like a shotgun or maybe like a tranquilizer gun? A tranquilizer. I mean, a tranquilizer gun would be Okay. Right. So yeah. wouldn't a school resource officer be the one that holds the gun? Or just have it in the control officer? <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, like she's the one that... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. 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 That's it. So you can see how easy it is to kind of poke holes in these very void uh, arguments that they're making here. Um, the, the gun debate, she says, should be left up to the states, which is a big out. Yeah. Well, I just also too want to say that like I don't really like I think we all know that like her resume doesn't really stack up to the kind of job that she has now. But um, I also too like I think at this hearing too they asked some pretty dumb questions too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Like they asked some yeah. dumb questions. They got dumb answers. <laughs> yeah. 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 Some of uh, some of the the committees were a little bit better. There was a Senate yeah, budget uh, sub subcommittee that was actually really was really on. Better. Senator Murray went off. Yeah. You had a question? I, I think it's just. In these situations, it seems like this happens a lot for her. She defers to the most extreme example to justify something that I feel like most people would be like, yeah, that's not a good idea. Yeah. Like, okay, the most extreme version of the example where you might need a gun yeah. is to protect children from a wild animal. <laughs> and that's gonna be your deferment for, yeah, guns might be okay. Yeah, yeah like, exactly. If you think about like your random you know, school anywhere in the US, you're probably not gonna have a wild animal and if you do, there's probably somebody else there who will take care of it, not your teachers, not your principal. I, I think that's just kind of interesting. So what kind of, what kind of people 
are going to be in those schools in, what did she say, Wyoming? I think Wapiti, yeah, Wyoming. Wyoming. Where, where is that located? I mean, yes. besides geographically, who lives there? Uh, you've got your hunters, you've got your farmers. Main, mainly right or left on the political spectrum, would you say? Right. Yeah, More or less, right? Yeah. So people at her CPAC meeting kind of thing. So these are issues that are important to her <coughs> her base, her constituents. So she'll she'll defend those, right? She'll make up whatever reason she needs. Grizzly bears. Okay, what about alien protect? Like, come on, you know, where, where's the cap here? Okay, let's, let's see another one. Confirm, will you insist upon that equal accountability in any K-12 school or educational program that receives federal funding, whether public, public charter, or private? I support accountability. Equal accountability for all schools that receive federal funding. I support accountability. Okay, is that a yes or a no? That's a, I support accountability. Do you not want to answer my question? I support accountability. Okay, let me ask you this. I think all schools that receive taxpayer funding should be equally accountable. Do you agree with me or not? Well, they don't. They're not today. I, but I think they should. Do you agree with me or not? Well, no, because... You don't not. agree with me. Mrs. DeVos... So why did she do that? She lied differently. What's that? for the private agenda, but why did she keep saying, I support accountability? What is that in particular? Why did she choose to say that over and over again? Definitely support accountability. Yeah. And what else, though? What, what does that protect her from? Yeah, saying Erica. The saying you support accountability can be accountability at any level. It Absolutely. doesn't have to be like state level accountability. It doesn't even have to be school-wide accountability. It right. could just be, I support accountability that this kindergartner learned the alphabet. Yeah. Like maybe just that one teacher in that one way is accountable. It's yeah, and not definitely not what he's talking about. She's definitely yeah. keeping that off of her plate. But what does that do for her? Why does she choose to say this thing over and over again? Why why would you why not just not answer? Or what 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 does that kind of language do for her? It's just something to think about. We don't, we don't have to answer that. But. Do you have any direct experience? Here's what you were talking about, about a second ago. Senator, I do not. Have you ever managed or overseen a trillion dollar loan program? I have not. How about a billion dollar loan program? I have not. Okay, so no experience in managing a program like this, the proficiency. So what do you think actually got her the position? Because she was confirmed. What do you think got her that position? What was that? Her connections. Her connections to? To the party. To the party. And money. Exactly, and money. We'll, we'll talk more about that in a minute. Great. Okay, now, now one more, a little one here. This one I think is important because it shows how if you let them talk themselves into a whole if you don't let up, if you don't allow them to take these little legal outs that they give, uh, you can kind of you can make a little bit of headway. I mean, you know, it's never enough, but th this uh, this at least kind of makes a little bit of headway. What philosophy are you articulating in this budget? Some of the programs that have been recommended for scaling back or cutting are duplicative. Some of them are ineffective, and some of them could better be supported by state, local, or philanthropic efforts. Do you include the cut of forty thousand teachers? federally funded in that category called duplicative or could be supported by some other entity? I, I don't know exactly what 40,000 teachers you're referring to, but if you're talking about the teacher training program, that... Um, no, I'm talking about Title II, Title 40,000 teacher salaries. So what is what is Title II? I'm, I'm not really too familiar with it. Can somebody look it up real quick? I looked it up, I can't remember exactly. I was hoping somebody else would. <laughs> it's not merely my department. I, I found an article that says Title II is the key to net neutrality, so what is it? Hmm. Title II, oh, I think that's for, for the FCC though, Title II net neutrality. Okay, uh, he, he mentioned it a little bit. If you guys are curious, you can just Wikipedia it or something like that, get a little idea of what it is. Um, no, I'm talking about, about Title II. Oh, Title no, two not, professional thousand. development. Professional development, thank you, thank you. Full teacher salaries. Uh, for reducing class sizes, is that is that what you're trying to suggest? Yeah, Those funds have been used for a broad range of teacher initiatives. Um, they, have they, been, they have been, they have been, they have been, they have been um, very thinly spread. And in many cases, like 20% of the cases, uh, the funds are less than ten percent or ten thousand dollars to a school, and so the the there's not been an effective and a, 
um, there, there's not been evidence of great outcomes or effectiveness from this program. Have you talked and to through, principals about how much Title $10, one on. funds? Have you, we, I have limited time. I, I know, time. But can, so real quick, how much is $10,000 to a school? That's a lot of money, right? Not so much to, you know, a giant uh, private organization that gets millions sometimes. I mean, you know, all in all, it's billions that are, that are floating around these things. Now if I could just well, do you want to talk time? about the implementation of the ESSA yeah. allows for great flexibility in the states to target resources to effective teacher training programs and teacher improvement programs. So there's, there's a lot of like opportunity to use them uh, to enhance well, okay, the I really do have limited time. This goes back to what former Governor uh, Shaheen mentioned, which is that uh, you are imagining revenue not in evidence. You are imagining flexibility that does not exist at the local level. So to say that, for instance, 21st century learning centers or what's happening in career and technical education or these uh, dollars that support 40,000 teachers across the United States, to say that, well, you know, that'll be handled by the private sector, that'll be handled uh, through increased flexibility. You reduce the flexibility that education systems have by reducing the funding that they have. And it's a sort of rhetorical device to say they will, they, they will, they will be basking in new flexibility. But anybody who's run a government or anybody who has run a school doesn't want flexibility, they want resources. And what you're doing is cutting them massively. Thank you, Mr. Ashley, Chairman. what I've, I've heard from a lot of uh, state and local leaders is that they do want and need flexibility. Okay. <laughs> Which state and local leaders do you think she's talking about? All right. So, one last little part here. Oh, we, we still got time. Okay, cool. So this is uh, this is in relation to finally we get to my article, the Perez article. It talks about uh, Pierre Boudot, and he has these things called thinking tools. Uh, this is kind of an abridged version of what he says. It's still not very short, but. Uh, the awareness of high activa uh, activated high status capital assist parents in understanding the admissions process. So they need help getting through school, navigating, figuring out what all this stuff means, why Betsy DeVos is talking about things. I don't know about you guys, I didn't really have a, a very big interest in politics growing up until I don't know, a couple of years ago or something like that. Just watching these things just kind of, you know, even searching through this stuff and just watching all this stuff kind of like bogs you down after a little while. But if you really listen to what they're saying, you can see how they are they have a, a mission, man. They are on a mission, and they're doing very well with it. They're winning at this point. Um, so anyway, the, the thing that works, according to Eastman Perez and Nino, somebody opened a, a, uploaded an, an article of a Nino, I can't remember who it was, um, about Latina parents, no? Wasn't it yours? Yes, okay, yeah. Yes, yes. so uh, their, their recommendations are uh, sharing the knowledge that we, we gained, you know, we're all in college, all master's degree? Is anybody a bachelor's in here? No, right? Oh, yeah? yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, so, yeah, we, we all know how to at least navigate the system. They talk about using CBOs and informative guides. What's a CBO? First letter is community. Based organization. Yep, that's it. So, community based organizations, these are usually outside of the schools. So, you kind of got to search for them, but they are there. So, uh, I want to talk a little bit about advocacy and how we can help people uh, learn about these things. So, uh, again, these are very, very short. We're almost Oh, we got plenty of time still. Okay. So this is from a union. It's such a roadblock to all of the things that we're trying to do when someone at the top really has no idea what they're doing in their job. You never attended a public school, K-12 school, did you? Correct. And your children did not either, correct? And you never taught in a K-12 public school, correct? Not that I mentored in that. We are holding her accountable for the fact that on all of these key points and key issues, she's failing. I don't have any bad information in front of her. You want to surprise <laughs> So here's a political one. This is from uh, Senator Bernie Sanders. I have not, I have not intentionally visited schools that are underperforming. Intentional. <laughs> so you can see how that can be effective for certain audiences, right? Who, who would that not be effective for? So like, uh, if you say you got, you know, your your local parents, you got your uh, elite class, the administrators, the principals, the policymakers. Then you have teachers, you have the students. So all of these different ads are kind of catered towards different uh, topics that, that are um, towards different different groups' in interests. Uh, so the last one here um, is is just something a little bit different. Enough bashing Betsy DeVos, I promise that's it. But uh, 
it just so happens, you know, she's the secretary. So. Does your little Timmy look? So I think that's a pretty good uh, comparison, you know, for the for the two types of, of schooling. So, um, all right, we're gonna go into our, our activities. We're gonna kind of merge a, a discussion. Yeah, we have plenty of time. We'll do a discussion. We're also gonna do this little uh, pamphlet activity. So this is this goes back to for those uh, thinking tools. I want you guys to create a thinking tool uh, that you can maybe use in your communities. You know, just just something a little draft. Doesn't have to be very professional. We're just kind of uh, working one out. So we're gonna have uh, you guys split up into little groups here. You guys can pick your own groups. Um, you should be able to choose your group based on your article, more or less. But uh, pick, pick whichever group you'd like to do. Uh, we're gonna be drafting a concise pamphlet uh, that I want you guys to put in as much relevant information that you think is important to the particular group that you're speaking to. And uh, you can you can design it any way you like. Um, so we're gonna have. Group one would be the admin and budget group. So you guys are going to be speaking to policyholders, uh, principals, administrators, things like that. Group two is going to be talking to ELL parents about <coughs> rhetoric and how to kind of decipher uh, the rhetoric and, and translate it. You don't have to translate it in Spanish if you, if you don't have to, if you can't. But uh, then what we're going to do this. Group three is going to be uh, addressing the students. Group four is going to be addressing the parents. And group five is going to be counter propaganda for teachers. So uh, we're going to do that, and then we're going to incorporate our discussion time into that. I'm just going to leave this up here for some little ideas. I'm going to full screen this. Okay. All right, so if you guys could, uh, get into some groups, I'll hand out these little sheets here. Also have pencils if you guys want to draw or anything like that. If you need so maybe we'll do like uh, one, two, three in that corner, four in this corner, and five in the middle. I think that'll probably be good. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Let me put the group group set up. My apologies. Let's show this again. So there's the groups there. So uh, group five would be teacher counter propaganda. So you're going to be a teacher talking to other teachers in your community about these, about these issues, putting together a pamphlet of information that's relevant to your audience. What are we three up to? Uh, number three is student choice. So that would be like a guidance counselor talking to uh, students. In the community. Cool. So yeah, I'll, I'll give you guys. This will explain it a little bit better. Here. Good. Uh, wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you're right, huh? All right, who's, who's in group one? <laughs> Let's do it this way. Who's going to do the admin? Anybody? Okay. Well, how about uh, number two, the ELLs? I know some of you guys had articles on that. I know you did. <laughs> Just one person. <laughs> okay. How about uh, student choice? So I'll give you the. You're going to do student choice over here? Okay. So that's group three. Doing group one. Uh, how about parents in the back? Okay. Yeah, those are both the same. It's just information to kind of uh, from our readings and stuff like that. I'm sorry, you said parents, right? Okay. Yeah. You guys need one of these too? Which group are you guys? Uh, Whatever's left. I think we have uh, EL. Oh no, uh, we have. Is that five? Are we five? Yeah, number five. I think that's it. Sure, let's do that. Okay. Wait, or number one. You can do number one as well if you'd rather. I don't know anything. About okay. So I have these little. Uh, this is just some info out of the, the resources and stuff like that that you can use. Does everybody have these pamphlet things here? And their info stuff. I think I gave them to everybody. All right, I think I see everybody. Okay, cool. If anybody needs pencils, they're up here.
Yeah, you know, like, better it. Oh, I meant to put more uh, uh, citations like names and stuff that kind of got away from me after a little bit, though. Thank you. It's the little things, the little important, you know, those little things. <laughs> Can't see, that's what it is. <laughs> rather just talk about it if you're not artists or anything like that just don't worry about it so what do you guys think we're convincing people not to go with charter schools that's, the goal. that's up to you that's up to you any relevant information that you think is important for what you group again oh for teachers to know yeah for teachers to know about the job process for teachers to know about uh, the benefits for teachers to know about how it affects the schools how it affects that's up to you. I would say there's more evidence for that, but if you think the other, otherwise, then make the case for it. Right. I feel like that's a big issue with this. Everyone is telling everyone what to think about these things, like politically. But then again, like we're not. I mean, before we were assigned this after. So I feel like that's like the first um, well, and I know they said are they not knowing what it is, not knowing what it is, not dealing with it in ways that like, like uh, they even put kind of like something on it. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was like, that's nice. Like, you Feel free to put that in if you'd like. Yeah. Or anything you find in your articles, too. Yeah. Anything that's relevant. Whether or not you're in the office. I guess when I tell people, share like the Onion articles, though, as a general article, I'm like, no. So I think we're really advocating for people actually. And for people actually make informed decisions. I think making this information. How would you like promote that in a public school as a teacher? Yeah. Yeah. That's my that's my like that's why there's so much info on it. Casually after school, just like dropping like all your stress out and just like bringing it out of bed. Yes. Or, you know, if you prefer uh, then for four So in conversation, maybe in faculty meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just curious your thoughts. That's all. I don't know. 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 Yeah. yeah. I think the techniques are, are worth, you know, exploring the, the ways that they teach. Even from working for them, I mean, they really do need to be a lot of that.
I don't understand why they're not just bringing that into the post. I couldn't really crack that part of it. That's right, that restricts them a lot. But how could people not, you know what I mean, like, how, more, how can you get your trust, like, what, like, someone, like, that's not the same, like, things like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you think it's, like, a self, a teacher nervousness thing, that they feel like they have to do this to you? Yeah. Okay. And so I wonder what some of them do, and they're looking for people. How can you, like, roll with that cognitive I never really dealt, I mean, I was always the outside contractor, you know, I'd kind of come in from school, I felt like the outsider, nobody knew me, I wouldn't hang out in teacher's lounges or anything like that, you know, so I never really got to hang out what they were about. Yeah, I guess so. It always seemed that nice. <laughs> <laughs> Especially on uh, open house night. That's the best time I can do. And parents fall for it all the time. I think maybe it's just trying to get the parents to promote more research based studies. You taught that in high school? Do you enjoy this more? So that was uh, the salary, more or less, and the freedom. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. There are actually a lot, and like I saw, like, <laughs> like yeah. you know, there are like people of like that like, yeah. 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 on their posters and like rides and stuff. That's great. That's great information. I, take a look. I almost wonder, like, promoting these kinds of things, like trying to promote correct information and accuracy within this kind of stuff, it almost doesn't seem like it is. It, it's like, it's kind of like, so much the role of the teacher. But then again, the teacher already is doing so many things and can only promote this so far within the constraints of what they do. Like, who... You said you're going to put resources on there? That's a good idea. Can I see what you guys got? Are you, are you putting stuff down? No, that's fine. That's fine. You don't have to draw anything. Well, I'm thinking like on the ground level. Like locally here, Richmond. You know what I mean? Like, what does that look like? Someone who's involved with like the school board and things like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Back with you. Good. But how can they? How can they manage that with not losing their jobs? I think that's kind of important. Yeah. Got to kind of tiptoe your way around in the faculty meetings. You know. Like, 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 Yeah, 
So again, this is just a kind of an exercise. So finish up your thoughts, jot things down. And if you guys want extra copies or anything like that, we have them. So. But if you're really lucky, your parents could afford to get you lunch on Fridays. Are you in a pizza restaurant? You could get pasta. We're going to move into the last little uh, section of this. We're going to do a discussion, kind of a real world word example. Tavanchi is going to lead that. But if anybody has one that they're proud of and they'd like to show off, not necessary. We can have nobody show them. It's, it's just an exercise. So, if anybody's really feeling it, I'll give you five seconds to decide. I right on. We, we basically have a comic strip about teachers maybe advocating for, like, just informing yourself about charter schools within like faculty meetings and maybe within discussions with their peers. Kind of trying to slip it in, being like, hey, maybe you should know about it. So we talked about the fact that not enough people know about it. And then we talked about how charter schools make kids like basically a form of money. Like these kids are being cashed out, and this is what they are. And then maybe the way to combat this on a larger scale is like getting in touch with your community-based advocacy groups that already exist, and then trying to advocate for, um, I guess, spreading the word about charter schools, like what they're actually doing, what we know and what we don't know, and just trying to get the word out that way. That's important for teachers to know. Yeah. A lot of them just hear the, you know, the flowery language and they're like, oh, maybe I'll give it a shot. Anybody else wanna wanna share? Should we move on? Go ahead. Would a school choice um, and each box represent something different? Like we have a box <laughs> for um, positives of school choice and then like some questions we have regarding it, like what about free and reduced lunch? Does that like go with kids depending on like the schools they go right. to? Um, yeah, transportation, that's into like a good one. She's like, you want to go here? We'll find your own way. Um, <laughs> kid choosing school, so like presented with options because it does typically fall in the kid rather than the parent. Ultimately, to choose the school, especially when they're older. Um, the segregation parts of it, like private versus public slash, you know, whatever. Um, and then how charter schools choose, which is typically like a lot of people. Nice. And then we added a part of like, what their positives are, because it's not all bad. Right. And so we said um, it can grant low income students access to a quality education if it's done right. Um, more money to be like used for resources if allocated responsibly. Um, a chance for more specialized education, like we saw that aviation school, which is like super specialized and kind of odd in my opinion. Like, who knows? I don't know. Anyway, that's just my opinion. Um, and then in the um, and then the diversity among socioeconomic students, like pulling students from different classes, can be beneficial. Very nice. Mm -hmm. That's all great. Anybody else? Yeah. Ours uh, was, I mean, it's definitely not as good as either of yours because we said like crayons. But um, we, uh, we were parents talking to, uh, I guess, a community in, uh, for the schools, and we just said, our theme was like under, so things that aren't represented in the schools. So under resource, a lot of the Title I schools don't have enough books or enough um, really anything. So the teachers usually have to buy it themselves and stuff like that. They're not financed enough, like underfunded, understaffed. The um, student to teacher ratio these days is crazy. Sometimes like close to 30 kids with one teacher. Um, unexpressed cultures like some schools are like we've been talking about still pretty segregated and just a lot of the same um and underrepresented parents i think parents don't know how to express themselves so there you or don't feel like they have enough ways to yeah. or that's aren't listening for to parents that. right yeah that's all good good information i like the uh, the under theme too that's mm -hmm. that's nice and catchy i think it'll help parents kind of remember anybody else or, okay let's go 
Y'all did really well. Very cool. Okay. Now we're going to put it in, in, uh, in context here. So um, we've been, like, discussing a lot of articles. We, you guys all read article, different articles about charter schools. And then 